Fate of the universe on the line. I want Iguadala. Kevin Durant. You know who I am. Hurry, way down to bang! Bang! The play! Nickels and dimes, fixes and knots. Some truth stayed buried, some stay forgot. Steph gets another accolade, Draymond marriage gets turned up, MVP is battling Europe. But here it looks all the way up. On the Aztec Balls India podcast, your favorite NBA podcast in an Indian accent. We are back at it again. My name is Ashwin and if you are with us for the first time, do like the video and subscribe to the channel for our views and opinions on the NBA. In the association this week, Netflix released their Tim Donaghy documentary which sheds no new light on anything. Chet Holmgren was ruled out of the upcoming NBA season after an injury which surprised no one. And Steph Curry was given his diploma from Davidson which moved the job market not one bit. Speaking of absolutes, I've got with me as always, someone who is doing okay. Someone who is not a big fan of the Jedis in Star Wars and someone who has never thought of visiting the countryside of Sweden. My co-host, Pili Dibai. What's up, what's up, man? What's up, Pili? Is, is it true that you don't like the Jedis in Star Wars? No, nothing like that. I think they're okay. Nothing. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not a big fan of either Star Wars or Star Trek. I don't really understand. I don't know those stories that much. You don't, you've yes. never tried watching it? Even though now it's on. I watch the movies, but I, I feel like, because I think there's a part of it which is like, the story is actually backwards, you know? So like, you actually need to like, know what's happening and that's too much. It <clears throat> didn't interest me that much. Uh, so fiction is not your thing. That doesn't seem... No, fiction right. is my thing. I like Lord of the Rings. Uh, no, oh, that okay. was a very good one. Uh, Game of Thrones was really nice. Okay. I, I, I like fiction. I just, this one was a little like, too much. I don't want to think there's something wrong with me. It has to be you. Okay. Coming back. I saw the Tim Donaghy documentary yesterday. Untold. Colon. Operation Flagrant Foul. So that was the operation that the FBI launched to figure this out. Uh, I don't know. I, I Like all the details that were there in the documentary. It's sort of always there in like Wikipedia only I think. I uh, Maybe the, peop- the people involved their names were not there. But uh, we always knew that. Tim Donaghy was involved in betting. We knew that he said that he did not fix the game. Uh, as in, he did not do something to make sure that this happened. But, uh, I mean, that, that, that's a different thing. Then he also said that David Stern was probably involved in covering up of all of these things. So, I mean, uh, did you get a chance to catch the documentary? No. no. Did, okay, did, they, did, they, did they ever talk about the Dallas Mavericks and Miami Heat finals? They, they didn't talk about it explicitly. But 2006 was the year when it broke out that something was going uh, haywire. They showed clips from that uh, final. They showed uh, Dwayne Wade clips and they showed Mark Cuban's uh, clips and all yeah. that. So I'm sure they implied it. They never co- talked about any important match. Like they always... Yeah. No, they talked about specific... Like they, talked about four or five games which Donaghy said that this team would win because of certain things. So, how it how it was going on was uh, Tim Donaghy said that he used to give information to the people who would pass that information on to the bookies who would then make money. So, for every correct call that he made on who would win the game, it was a very basic uh, thing. Like, will this team win the game or will that team win the game? Hmm. So, once, once that happened, once he would tell them the correct pick, he would get two thousand dollars for that correct pick for that day. But oh, that's it. Yeah, but if he made a mistake, he would not have to pay any penalty for. It. He would only get two thousand dollars for it. But because of the amount of games that he was refereeing, like it was, uh, like he made that's enough dough. Okay. Uh, he made enough dough. Okay. Yeah, but apparently he was making good money as a uh, as a normal referee. Also, apparently all the referees like uh, they showed one clip of our uh, future guest. And past guest Ronnie Nunn also, but they didn't talk anything about him. I remember when we had him on the pod also, he talked about how that was, that really shook people's confidence in the league, right? Like, if the referees who are supposed to keep things clean are, uh, like, you can't trust them, right. then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, I mean, like your like thoughts about, yeah, your thoughts about Tim Donning and the whole scandal. Like, anytime there is huge money in sports, there will be. Mm. 
something can go wrong. Yeah. I mean, I I don't. I mean, I don't. Uh, I have no thoughts uh, really. I thought that <coughs> the NBA handled it okay. You know, like mm-hmm. they reprimanded the guy, they got him out, they made sure that uh, there was a whole like. I mean, a public bashing was was like ensured, right? So this means that like it's st- when like when there is like a public shaming of somebody mm-hmm. for a certain. Uh, behavior i think it generally leads to positive outcomes across a, like a closed community of people like you know so if it's referees and if there's public shaming where it's like oh my god like you're such a shameful character which is what mm. nba did to tim donaghy mm. i think it it fixed the other issues like or it made it more difficult for referees to bet on the side or uh, so see one thing is that i did not buy that Tim Donaghy was act, acting as a lone wolf. Like he was the only player who, who was the only referee who was doing this because they uh, did some sort think of... think he was uh, a fall guy? Yeah, I mean, because uh, the in the interview they said that he was the smartest guy, right? Like he was the smartest ref who could fix games. So, uh, I mean, it seems so stupid to me to believe that he was the only guy doing it in a league where... When Would you do it if you were a referee? Even if it is against the rules, that is, uh, you know, I've I've often thought about, uh, you know, power really does corrupt me sometimes. Like it really, like a little bit power I get, I'm like, oh shit, you know, like I I can do something about it. I don't think I would do it uh, because I don't like doing illegal yeah. things. You know, Ashwin, I actually found the exact comp for you. I used to always like try to find like who is like in popular culture like a good comp for Ashwin. Uh-huh. Like initially, like I thought you were like a good mix between like Kramer and and George, like just Kramer like a and okay. good, like a good mix of it. But I found the right person. Have you heard? Of, have you watched this uh, sitcom called uh, Better Call Saul? Yeah, yeah. I just I just started watching it like two three weeks back because I think they had a finale recently, and everybody on my Facebook was like talking about oh Better Call Saul oh we're so, so we're so sad and like oh, fuck I watched it and. I think you are like uh, Jimmy McGill, Saul Goodman. Saul Goodman. Like, what? Have you not seen uh, Breaking Bad? No, I watched Breaking Bad, but ah. Breaking Bad like is a, is what like th- four seasons. It's very no, small, and his part six is also very seasons. small in it. Correct, correct, correct. But correct. but, but, he, but he Better Call Saul is like s- mm. yeah, Better Call Saul is like s- six seasons, and it, it goes into like his psyche and yeah, it portrays him as a good guy making really shitty decisions. And like having no no honesty like at all, right? <laughs> so that's yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. like I was very like uh, I thought it was a very because I think essentially essentially somewhere he's a good guy, but mm. like when it actually comes to like having to make a decision that is not in his interest, he can't do it, even if it's like the right thing to do. Like so many times, like in the did you watch the series? You didn't watch the series. Right? I, I've seen the first three seasons, or two, I think two seasons. Mm, okay. No, but, yeah, I, but I think that in the in those two seasons gets, also he he does a lot of uh, shady thing. That's why his brother hates him, right? Like his older brother hates the fact that he became a lawyer, but he's essentially a con man. He's just a con man who's got a degree. He calls him something like a monkey with a grenade or monkey with a, a bullet. <laughs> no, but like I feel a, like his brother is a little extreme. Like he's psycho. His brother is a psycho. Like his brother is psycho, but at, from the from the like ethical standpoint from, his brother thinks his, that ethics is more important as a lawyer than just knowing the law like yeah, you can yeah. know the law like you can train a monkey to uh, shoot with a gun but the monkey should know that it should not shoot with the gun unless it's absolutely required yeah yeah but I think the interesting part for me was like his relationship with Kim Wexler I think that was mm-hmm. like a very super interesting because Kim Wexler is absolutely. like very straight for very like straight to the book yeah. Um, and for some reason she's very attracted to Saul and I thought that it was very co- a good comp for Ramya and you like Ramya seems to be like very like to the book uh-huh. you know a- yeah. and she's also attracted to you uh, so I, I, that I just thought like all of those like I like making these comps so like I just thought but you've not seen I mean, the, not, you've seen the season though you've seen at least like couple of seasons of Better Call Saul yeah, yeah I'm, in the, I'm in the last season now oh you're in the last season now oh. 
Yeah, yeah, I have to. Yeah, yeah. Like we've just finished the Breaking Bad marathon, so now we have to start with uh, Saul Goodman. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah, no, I, I know it's very good. I, I mean, it's good because now I don't have to. I don't have to. I don't have to wait for like uh, next season. I, that's the thing I hate. That's why, like, if there's any good series, I just wait for it to end. It has to end. And then I watch. <laughs> and I watch the whole thing together. I did. I did almost the same thing for Game of Thrones. Also, like, I didn't watch the first like four or five seasons. Yeah. And then I just like sat and watched it. Just easy. It's just better that way. I feel like it's more exciting. Because I always have downtime. Okay, we're going, going, we're going out. No, no, please. I always, always cut it all off. Don't worry about it. But do you agree with my comp? Like when you watch Better Call Saul? No, not really. Because I that... like to think. I like to think that I'm. Uh, because see, for me, Jimmy is really talented. It's just that his ethical. A compass is completely off the charts. Like he has also is very insecure. Like he's very insecure mm-hmm. about that. Like he's very insecure about the fact Correct. that, like, you know, like he. But he is a like, showman. Also, people, like, people I, don't respect I, him. People yeah, don't respect correct. him. That he's insecure about that part. He's, like, he's not. I don't think he's insecure about his skill set. I think he knows he's very good no, no, at no. what he does. I, I not the lawyer that, but part. Like he's the he's a showman guy, right? Like he knows huh. that showman part of the trick, which. Is something that his brother hates. Like he doesn't want the show. He wants the actual steak. He doesn't want the, all that sizzle, bizzle, bizzle, and all that. And he's always like, no. I mean, like if you go go through happy. all the seasons, if you go through hmm. all the seasons, right? Like the I think the core of like the the conflict between him and his brother is that like he is very good with people. Yeah. Uh, uh what Jimmy? His real Jimmy. name is Jimmy McGill. Jimmy McGill. He's very good with people. And because he's very good with people, everybody loves him. Mm. Right? Trusts him. Trusts him. Uh, and this guy, who's actually a good guy and like very like ethical, whatever, done done like so good in his life. Yeah. Uh, people don't like him because he's not personable. He's not approachable. He's looked upon. Like he, people like, you know, they put him in a pedestal. And like, oh, yeah, he's like, okay, this guy. Like, so we can't get close to him. And he wants to, like, so I think that's that's the core. I don't think it has to do with, like, the sleaziness because I feel like as a lawyer, even he's sleazy. Like, you'll see him doing, like, a lot of, like, I wouldn't say unethical stuff, but lawyery stuff to get what he wants to get on the court. That mm-hmm. is Jimmy's brother. So I don't think he, he has a problem yeah. with that. I think the core of it is, like, there isn't a person that likes him more than... Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimmy McGill. Mm-hmm. I think that's what... I mean, they respect him, but they don't like him. They don't but, like him. Uh, yeah, because like Jimmy is willing to do whatever it takes to get to wherever he wants. Like he, There is this dialogue, I think it's in the final season, where he's like, uh, I'm afraid of how much uh, potential I have. and like. My traveling world, you can't even imagine. You can't conceive of what I'm capable of. Huh, so I saw it in some sort of, uh, not trailer, what do you call that? Like some sort of short clip. In that way... I don't think he is exactly like me, but I, I can see the comparison. I don't know. Like sometimes, I mean, I, I don't, I've never thought that way. I've never seen. But I, you, I you, like didn't, you didn't, you didn't see that when you, like you didn't feel it. You didn't no, see no, the no. comp when you, okay, okay. That is fine. No. Okay. I just thought like it was comp because of Kim, you know, being very straight, Ramya being very straight, you know, you, I just thought like, it's just like a nice little comp. I don't know. How, I don't know about your relationship with your brother. So I don't know uh, about that part, but I just thought like that was like a good comp. That that makes sense. And now I will look out for it, or or maybe I'll not look at it, and then I'll ask Ramya, "What do you think? Do you think something?" And let's see. Yes, obviously not. No, but Ramya is wearing wearing like red colored, no, what do you call that? Rose colored glasses. Ah. There was, there was <laughs> this good joke. <laughs> is this it? It said <laughs> when you're wearing rose colored glasses, red flags just look like flags. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit <laughs> anyway no, coming back to the, uh, so so like okay my thoughts from that thing because you didn't see it so when you see it maybe I we'll, watch it now. We'll, we'll add it back to this episode or something we'll figure out what to do no no but, it's okay you tell us tell me what you what you thought I mean I, I, I saw it on Netflix but I'm not very I mean I didn't I'm not very interested you didn't want to watch it take it I mean even after watching it I thought that you know like it was not as interesting it was not that uh path breaking or anything of that sort sort of just yeah, like a Wikipedia new, turned into a movie come out of ah, correct yeah. but again right like we I don't think we've like one of the probably the lowest points of the NBA especially 
mm-hmm. because all that money was coming in, right all that money was yeah. coming in and and so for me it made like to some things are very clear for me one is that i don't think that he was acting as an alone person i think definitely he was acting with someone else or maybe there were other people also involved in this thing because if you have money if you're getting money you can't keep quiet he didn't seem like someone who would be very quiet about what he was doing you know? and that news is going to fly somebody else is like can you cut me in also i also would like to you know make some extra money mm-hmm. so in my head there is no way that he was operating alone like this for the period of like 4 or 5 years it is almost impossible that he was acting about secondly okay, when he sense. says that the commissioner asked him for you know like they talked about preferential treatments for stars and all it in my head that is completely you know, like uh, in sync with what david stern's uh, like when people talk about david stern they talk about him like he he was man who made the league go from this much revenue to this much revenue and any time money is involved you know that that person has to have like you know like enough power to move mountains from side to side he has to make some shady deals have to happen somewhere somewhere you have to cut across uh, politics and you have to talk to your like you know ga- gangs and lords Someone. and mafias and all that like it has yeah, to be there yeah. right? right so and david stern uh, yeah exactly and david stern being david stern like the lord of all he surveyed there is no way that he did not know that this was happening so i am sure that he never expected it to get caught but he i think when it got caught he made sure that the uh, everyone made tim donnie the fall guy they instantly cut out all parts of uh, there being other associations any other referee they would have been caught it would have been terrible but instead they just said this was the only guy they fired him they changed the system oh, inside yeah. border and then they mm-hmm. just said that okay nobody else we did an internal review nobody else was involved don't worry about it blah 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 okay they ended it right so and david stern has always had this very tough stance on like <clears throat> you things are my way or you can you know like go to the highway Hmm. like he talked like that with uh, nba superstars as well told them that don't mess around like there's a lot of money at hand we can't afford to you know like go back to our olden days if there's so much money which means that the players only get like 51% of the money right so all that money is there so don't do anything which will tarnish the reputation of the league so in my head i think there were more people involved but they realized that they got caught Uh, at the wrong time so they better make it seem like you know there was only one person doing this and then from there that point onwards things would have been little bit more covert things would have been little bit more handled properly so that it doesn't come on i mean i think st- still think that stars get favorable calls but i really hope that people are not influencing the game's uh, direction right uh, they they keep talking about the last 2 minute report and this and that and that i i i want to believe that after that time they really made it stricter like uh, you cannot call silias fouls to determine the game or to determine the spread uh, that is what mm. i feel because tim donaghy also said something very i thought was very iconic like i can manage a game to within 6 points of each other like i the referees can do that like they can uh you you know that you know how they call the games right it's not always who will win right it's like how much will they win by uh, they that add those sure. points spread and all that so he said that i can i can make sure that like a 10 point game can become a 6 point game or a 6 point can game can become a 10 point game uh i can i can manage that sort of a spread so because betting has gotten a little bit more Uh, what do you call it? sophisticated i think nowadays also it's possible that some kind of uh, you know like invisible hand is there doing something with that i don't want to believe it and i think that 2006 may when that thing happened uh, when they sentenced him in 2008 after that probably the referees and the league realized that we don't want to burn our hands on this we've got a proper cash cow right now let's make sure the actual winners win right like let's not uh, after 2006 after dirk lost uh, <laughs> easy to win 2006 finals absolutely absolutely yeah i mean that that game though that series everyone knows that it's one of the most contentious uh, but but let, let's the, you know uh, the hypothetical thing is would dirk be as great uh. if he had won the 2006 finals and never won again or that or like 
just that story the redemption story of coming back and then like in 2011 just i mean that was an epic run like the 2006 was not very epic you know like yeah, no one really remembers it i mean got obviously it. the the western conference finals was really tough uh, with the spurs against the san antonio against the spurs got yeah, it game 7 overtime they won i think yeah yeah that manu ginobili fault yeah um, so um, i don't know i feel like I feel that it le- it adds to Dirk's le- legend. But if imagine, no, then how it would have worked out is Dirk wins the ring in 2006 and in 2007 he gets the MVP. But MVP. then gets uh, uh, kicked out in the first round. So I think it, like uh, romanticism wise I think 2011 is much better because it's like oh god I was so close and then they took it away from me. But they cannot deny greatness. And then 2011 I became like one of the like the greatest single uh like you know pu- pulling job what is it called like a mm. carry job carry of job. all time one of the greatest uh, carry jobs of all time yeah. so uh, I, i think i mean greatest i would say i think the the only other t- guy who comes close is hakim you know hakim in, correct by uh, hakim's teams also were very not not very legendary yeah, yeah. I, especially the i mean the comeback not the ninth, the ninth not the second one the first one so they had absolutely nobody second at least they had Clyde Dexler who was a top 50 yeah, old, old, player yeah. normally in the league and before that they had Clyde Dexler was still still yeah ah uh, correct but yeah i mean I, i would if i had to choose then i would probably choose that because that he got the mvp that year i think defensive player of the year finals mvp so like individually one of the greatest uh, jobs of all time yeah. but dirk arguably like you know top 3 i don't even know who top, the second one is but easily top 3 without any arguments hmm. uh top 3 top 2 kind of uh, i mean all of all of michael jordan's six rings i would say that's not true. carry that's not, true. <laughs> yeah, not, true. Yeah, not true. who else not as, as much as a carry as uh, you know this one no yeah is the bucks is the bucks a carry by yanis no um i i don't know because it happened so recently like carry, like you know there's no uh, legend associated with that maybe we'll think a lot more about it maybe we should look at some numbers and figure out what exactly we'll define as carry job hmm. i mean steph last last season was not bad i was a pretty sick good game. the only thing is like he went through very bad teams like ah, it's not correct. like he defeated very good teams correct. i think the exactly. thing about about the dirt thing is like he went through like really good teams He went through Kobe. First round Portland, uh, then Kobe, yeah. then the OKC top big three, and then, and then, and then LeBron, uh, LeBron, and LeBron, 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 and, and the that, Heatles. Yeah. So that that's why it, it's even more legendary, is because just yeah. the path. Correct. Yeah, I mean, what, that's a crazy carry job right there. Like I, I, I would think that even Kawhi should be mentioned somewhere there. I mean, even in the finals, it, even though mm. like Durant and Clay Thompson all went down and all, but getting yeah, to that finals still, itself was. like getting to the right. getting to the eastern conference there itself was a big deal right orlando they faced and they faced uh, no not really man not really I mean, no i th- i think milwaukee was the much much more favored job and they went down to milwaukee, in that both, series but also. both milwaukee and philadelphia were not ready philadelphia yet yeah. yet like but talent wise like i think they are more, especially like i mean imagine 76ers had embiid simmons and jimmy mm. butler in that team and tobias harris that, oh you're right you're right Right. That's true. That went That's to game true. seven. The yeah. next That's series, they were down two and then comes back. Yeah. I mean, the most epic thing about the Kawhi thing was how he shut down like Giannis. <laughs> that was just like. That's okay, the way we lost one friend. We lost one friend in that series. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that was that. It was so clear yeah. that he he decided like I think after game two or something. He's like, okay, after game two, like, I'm just gonna do. Said that's it. Like, yeah. can't uh, depend on these people. I have to do it myself. <laughs> I have to do everything myself. <laughs> that was that was okay. uh, that was that was my favorite part of that whole run. Was like how yeah. he shut down Giannis defensively. I only remember the Twitter war at that time where we ended up losing our dear friend. But it's okay. We had already lost him. We had not lost him. Okay, he was uh, he was qu- quite decent with us. but after that he's like oh, fuck these guys <laughs> because he kept spamming him with those gifs of kawai smiling oh it's true it's true okay now i remember okay okay yeah i was i was spamming gifs that's true i remember that that kawai the same gif yeah that smile gif 
I think that was the year Yanis won his first MVP, right? Hmm. Oh yeah, he was he was on the Yanis train and I was on the Kawhi yeah, yeah. train. Okay, exactly. And right. and then right, this right. matchup ma- met there, they went down to Nil and he's like, I told you all Yanis MVP, no Kawhi Leonard, blah 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 and <laughs> after that series he's just like here is some gif for you. <laughs> Here is a gif. Kawhi just smiling. <laughs> just smiling. Nothing. No uh, words. Nothing. No, no, just here. Oh, God. <laughs> Classic. Anyways. Uh, good days. Good days. Okay. All right. Uh, secondly, we... I mean, I went to the Kerala State. Yeah. What is it called? Kerala State Senior Basketball Championships. My God. I've said that word so many times. I still can't get it properly. It's the 66th Kerala State Senior Basketball Championships. At the home of basketball in Chalakudi, Kerala. So Chalakudi is like a very interesting place, right? Like it's supposed to be the place where, I mean, for the last, I think, 10 years, out of the last 10 years, 9 years, they have had the most consumption of alcohol in a, like in a city, in a little area, right? Uh, like Chalakudi. In India? In India, in India, correct. I mean, in Kerala means in India, right? That's Correct, exactly. In difference. Kerala, that was the place with the, I, I don't know if it's called municipality or whatever, that's the place which sells the more, most liquor on liquor on uh, Christmas and on, I think. Stats are mm-hmm. not exactly sure, but that's what it is, right? So there, what I realize is people don't, uh, they don't give landmarks as, like, you know, actual landmarks. They're like, okay, this place is next to that bar. Or, you know, this place. So, yes, I'm next to this bar in that place. And they're like, okay, that bar I know. I don't know that place. (laughs) So, we are playing at this indoor stadium, right? Municipal indoor stadium. I mean, you would assume that it's like a common landmark for everybody. It's like right next to the highway. It's it's a big stadium also. So, people are just like, ah, I'm next to the Siddharth bar. There is a stadium there. Oh, I've never seen that stadium, but I will be there. I'll be there next to Siddharth bar. (laughs) Uh, like very different atmosphere from this PSG trophy, right? Like there was only Kerala teams. So the play is a slow, a little bit slower. Uh, like the distribution of the variance of uh, the talent is a lot. Like the top four teams have amazing talent and the others are sort of, you know, like a little bit up and down all things. Mm. Uh, this three-point shooting is not as great as I saw with teams like Indian Navy and SDAT and all that. Like the in that previous tournament I went, but a lot of bigger bodies, a lot of this post play, like the ball goes a little bit, like I said, a little bit slower sort of game. Defense, absolutely crazy by like the top Sorry. teams, like the top teams were the real teams, and everyone else was sort of just trying to like there was no chance of an upset in any team. Mm-hmm. But the final, like the semi finals, ended up being the two top teams, which are uh, like you know senior players. And the two, like the number three and number four were uh, college kids. Like college kids from Trishur and college kids from Kote. Like college kids, like they're still in college. And the other ones are all like, you know, sort of older players. No, Calicut. Uh, Calicut, though. I, I, I don't think, or like all the good players from Calicut probably go up and end up elsewhere because, you know. Dude, like Calicut it's not a other. Calicut team. Yeah, there is a Calicut team. It's not very good, though. That's the only issue. No, not very you good should compared, start please. one with good one. Like have like uh, trials and tryouts and all. Ball is Bay, Ball is Bay, Calicut team. Team Ball is Bay. Hashtag Team Ball is Bay. Yeah, why not? Why? <laughs> well, I have to be what? in Calicut ha- to do the trials now. What? No, you just have to. You, you, what? What do you have to do? You have to pay them, right? Some to pay the game. Huh? I don't know how how these work. How these things work. It's not that much. I don't think they they expect to be paid. I don't think to play basketball. No, no, absolutely not. They don't get paid that much. The, the prize money yeah, is barely set, covering that. Set up a trial. Mm. Ask straight, off, straight out of Kochi to uh, straight out of India to uh, to advertise it a little bit. Uh. Start off, and just then it'll be a good reason for you to also go to these like events because not not only is the Calicut team going to be participating, I'll be the also coach be of the like, Calicut oh, shit, team. Are, yeah. Our owner is also like the referee, not referee. Oh, commentator. commentator. Oh, damn. That's too much. That's too much. Uh, I, I, th- I, I think like any good player in all of Kerala, right? Like either they will play for KSCB or they'll play for Kerala Police or they'll play for Kochi. So now uh, Kerala Police they... is very good. Kerala Police? Uh, historically. Uh, historically, they're good. But now, right, uh, right now, the team which won, Trivandrum, those are all KSCB players. And uh, the second team, Ernolam, was K- uh, Kerala Police plus Customs and Excise. Uh, 
so they they are not all from kochi uh, they are not all from ernakulam but they come from different places but they all play for this it's not like if you are born in kochi code you play for kochi code you could be born in kochi code but if you are really good then you'll never play for kochi code because kochi code team by itself is not good like all oh, the you know what we can do we can get uh-huh. we can get a captain as the captain captain as the captain that guy <laughs> He only won't come for the team meetings. He'd be like, "No, today is not my day." <laughs> but that's he, he can be like the Kyrie, right? The Kyrie of the team, but with uh, less ego. It doesn't seem like he has an ego, but no, 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 not not at all. But he doesn't have any interest also in playing basketball, which is a big problem. Like ego and all, you can check out later. But <laughs> first, you need the <laughs> drive to play the game. <laughs> anyway, and so, I told you uh, like why he why he doesn't like to play. Have you ever yeah, asked him? Yes, like, we've, we've discussed this because. Oh, I, I'll tell you one more thing. But uh, first, I'll tell you this, right? Like, so uh-huh. he's talked about how he's like, what is the point of being very good? Like, there is no money in this. There is no fame in this. Nobody knows who you are. Uh, so why should I just struggle so much and try to become like so good? Because, like, even h- however talented you are, there is a certain limit to how bet good you can be. but i push okay. myself through all of this thing i push myself all like uh, like there is no remuneration which is uh, uh, commensurate with how much i am putting in it's not like basketball good, in india has any money a right? good plump government job man is now paying like a lakh a month really i don't know what these guys players get but i, I don't think they get paid lakh a month or not i mean they they are all really humble people they don't have any ego whatsoever which brings to me my second point so i had thought about doing one of these uh, ballis bay content there where you know you keep that uh, camera there and they come and sit and ask them questions you know blah 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 okay like but all these players none of them have any sort of uh, charisma what, what is it like any sort of personality they're all like really shy really quiet and then i talked to deepak about it like i talked like I, i mean i told them that if i had you know half the talent that these people have i would be walking around like i have giant balls i'd be walking around with a chest like this like i or sub cool these people all of them very quiet very humble don't speak much just be like ha ah, okay thank you when i complimented i i used to go up after the games and be like you know whoever i thought was the game changer i would be like you know great game like your rebounding was crazy you're the reason that the game went on and they'll just be like thank you and then they they'll get uh, they'll overwhelmed i i think with me talking english but also because they are not used to getting such compliments from fans fans will be like good game and that's it i'm like telling them okay you did this amazingly there at that point of time boxed out well and here you took the rebound shot at 3 point blah 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 and all that like i don't know how to respond to that so i think the next generation like because there is no money i don't think they feel that they are great like there is like there is no you're great but who's who is saying this who is saying you're great your coach might be saying you're great your parents might be saying you're great but nobody objective is coming and saying that you're great right like here in in the us in the nba may everyone comes in with a swagger because they know that rookie contract 4 million dollars a year they're going to make if they get drafted in the first round uh, even otherwise they're going to make enough money that they will never have to experience poverty again if they get selected but even the people who are not getting selected the ones in college and all they have a bit of swagger about them right because there is so much money in college basketball there's so much money in nba here there is no money whatsoever so i think once that changes maybe people will think like there are few characters i'm not saying there's no there are few characters in random there's this number 4 rahul sharma and all these he's a bit of a character right like he's he's Ooh. got that little sort of uh like he looks a little bit like you uh but he's got a mullet and Like six foot four and all that. I think it's probably six foot four, six foot five. My my height. <laughs> But he he uh, Rahul Shah. So that guy has got a little bit of a swagger. There's some players in Trivandrum who got that sort of like you know I'm good. Like look at me that kind of uh, feeling. But everyone else very very modest, very unassuming. Uh, there was one player who was like a mix of Demarcus Cousins and Hakeem Olajuwon. Like this number. I forgot number twelve from Ernaldo. I think Shiraz. Okay. Oh, like, I saw. Had, I saw. He put. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he put, put that big step. No, but he he didn't get a lot of those amazing turnaround, uh, like fadeaway shots that he was making. Crazy ones. I, I I could not believe that those were going in, and he hit it so confidently. Better fade turnaround fadeaways than me. 
Yes. I'm sorry, I'm very hungry. Yeah. Uh, go for it, go for it. You can just listen to my story. So, uh, mm-hmm. like, there were some really, really, really good players, right? But, uh, like, the whole pace of it, it felt like Kerala is a little bit, uh, like, slower not than there yet. Not uh, slower than Tamil Nadu, slower than, obviously, Indian Navy, slower than a lot of the other teams. Like, they play very much post-oriented. Post say bahar aega, fir, and then something and all gets done. But, uh, like the defense was crazy, like the intensity with which they were playing, like the bodies are just flying in the finals and all, like both teams, pam, 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 they were just going, bam. that was like a lot of fun to watch. So, and uh, women's game though, like the team which won, they came back from 11 point deficit in the first two quarters and then beat the other team by some 15, 16 points, something like crazy. Gina mm. Karia, Gina mm-hmm. Skaria. Oh my God. So how do you, how do you feel now, now? Now, like now, before I remember, I used to like hate on Indian basketball. Not hate. I never like, hated on Indian who, basketball. I just did not know about it. I mean, I, I'm sure that's what you say now. It's not <laughs> like you never. didn't have enough ta- enough time or exposure to get educated. But but why uh, would I get educated? I like who? How can you get educated if you're not going there and watching it? Right? Like it's not like there was any coverage of Indian basketball. It's not like true. the names are household names or anything. Right? Like there is no reason. To suddenly be like, okay, I know a lot about it. I mean, obviously, I will not diss it because I don't know anything about it. But I've seen India playing in the World Cup qualifiers and all that. And the game is pretty flat. But now, like, you know, you know a little bit more about them. You know, like, individual players. Like, you know that Gina has played in the Australian League. Uh, you know that uh, Geetu uh, Anajo has played in the Australian League. She was, like, one of the much but what, better players. How, what about the quality of game that's the one thing they used to always scrib about is like man who's going to watch these people play they're not that good What's correct that? but I, mean, I guess is... i mean i mean i i never heard anyone who has probably watched the game i think they just think that this is this league and probably i mean but you know I, whenever you think, that, also they, talked you think, to, not you think that now huh? that the the games are entertaining i'll tell you honestly out of uh i think we did uh, six days, uh, 24 games in that tournament. Maybe five or six were close enough to be entertaining. Most of the other games were pretty much blowout team. That's what I said, right? Like the spread is very thin. Like there are very few, very good teams. Most of the other teams were like pretty bad. Bad, matlab, you know, like it's not an even competition. Like one team was really good, the other team was not that good. So the proper close games happened in the semi finals only. But you haven't even seen much of the North Indian teams. You haven't seen like Delhi yeah, and Punjab and all these guys. Correct, right? correct. I've not seen any of those. Right? Maybe when they when there's a nationals and all coming, so maybe I'll get to see a little bit more Indian basketball. But I, I told you right, like the difference is so clear. Like Kerala, may nobody does a full court press like Indian Navy or SDAT. Now are the loyaler teams from Chennai. Like, their full court press is crazy. Like, everybody is just pressuring the ball, pressuring others, making sure that they can commit that eight second violation in the back court. Kerala, everybody is like, okay, all right. you know, we let them come into the front court. Let's fight here. Let's not fight there. Because I think it's a stamina issue. It's a youth issue. It's a strategy issue. So, that's what I feel. Like, the game is played differently here. And, you know, that's why... I, like the the same team when they go uh, when they played in PSG, they could not beat the top teams. I mean, they reached. The, I think they got the fourth place in that tournament. The same KCB team only, but it's a different league only, completely different league back there. Like those players run by so young. Imagine teams. if you're comparing it to NBA. No, no, that there's there's no absolutely no comparison. But again, NBA is a players' league. This is a referees' league. That that's like one more thing that I felt like they give a lot of importance to referees. In India, like the game is not for the spectators because not a single spectator in, in the entire history of Indian independence has ever paid money to come to a game. All the games, spectators are allowed in for free. Nobody is, there's no oh, all gate this is free. Either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All this is free. Indeed. Like the money comes from the uh, sponsors who've got their hoardings and all everywhere, right? Uh, so the NBA is a spectator driven sport. This is like. And does and does he, Trader of India get paid from these tournaments? Uh, from or, this uh, tournament, yeah, covering. he got paid. He got paid because they asked him to come and do this job. That's why he said that you know, please come. We'll like that. Commentating will be like a very good add-on to this uh, experience. So, so 
uh, is this your first paid gig? Uh, I didn't get paid for this. <laughs> no, not even like I didn't T and A. Ah, no, no T and A. My my food and all was food and accommodation was taken care of. But uh, ha, so that way I got. No, paid. sorry. Ah. Ra- oh, oh. A was taken care of. A and ah, F. A and F. What is T? Travel. Ah, travel. T okay. is travel. It's called T and A. Uh, travel accommodation. Yeah, I mean, food was taken care of and this was oh, taken care of. Also, no? it's, 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 yeah, I mean, I got the flight tickets were really cheap because I, I had just flight? come back oh, from Goa. Wow. The, you spent, so you spent more money on Straight Out of India than Ballis Bay. That is not true. This mic it's and this true? camera is worth, this was easily worth it's more true. than that. No, no, my God. No, that is not true. <laughs> it was a nice experience though because some of those players said that, you know, we sent the links to our parents and that's what I was talking about in that thing. Like a lot of these people, they are so happy that there is coverage and people are talking about them and people are talking about the game uh, because they have never felt this kind of coverage ever. Like nobody gives a shit about basketball. Right? Like the uh, ESPN is not covering like it. You, uh, like you, Ashwin before he was the commentator of a state of huh. <laughs> Correct, correct. But I'm not Only a... Only till it serves his purpose. I am not a broadcaster. <laughs> And I, I told you, like, I, I didn't know that there was any, like, I, I told you, I had no idea there was, there was a league in India for basketball. Like, there was a 5 on 5 professional league. It ran four seasons or something like that, UBL karke, I think three or four seasons. None of this I knew because it was not there. Like, in the newspapers, it was not there. On TV, it was not there. On the internet space, it was not there. It was not there anywhere. So, you're saying like, that unless there was you no, played basketball. There was no basketball played, games played before? No, I'm we saying that there, it was it. it was not unless you were in the stadium you did not know or unless you were a player you did not know unless you were the player's relatives you did not know that there was something like this going on. So I think that's that's what whole state of India's deal is anyways, right? He wants to uh, bring this game on to more people so that more people get inspired to play the game because they're like, oh my God, look at this game. And, and the, it's not like it's in some sort of potato format, right? It's in clear HD format. So you don't even feel like it's a low quality stream. It's a high quality stream that is amazingly high quality commentary going on. And there is, we talk about the game, talk about the players and all that. So I, I think that way there's a lot of uh, value being added. And there's, I mean, that's the vision at least for Straight Out of India. Let's see where that takes them. Okay. And me. And who? And them and me. <laughs> I mean, if I can do a commentary uh, for money, then, you know, what is what is a better deal than that? I don't understand. Uh, hey, I, I, uh, I'm just saying, I'm, <laughs> Saul, Goodman, Saul Goodman right here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think it's a great comp because some words that you used in my word cloud, I've figured out some words that you used. I associate a lot with those words, but uh, like I have what, to what really... Kind of I, I'm not going to tell you what kind of words, but there were some words that you used. I was like, okay, all right. Not all of them are positive, but I was like, okay, makes sense. It makes sense because I've never thought of it that way. Very honestly, I never thought of it that way, but some words that you use, I was like, oh shit, that's right. He, there is a very good point there. So I will Oh my god, go ahead and uh, check it out. Anyway, that coming is- back, Vineet, number yeah. two pick, this draft already sidelined will not play this year. Chet Holmgren, our favorite OKC boy, is not going to play this year. Uh, the tall boy line- lineup is not going to come out this year. So, OKC once again, probably going to tank and compete with San Antonio for that number one pick for this year. Uh, I mean, Pro-Am League, right? Like, these are all uh, tournaments that they, not tournament, like pickup games that they play for no reason. Do you think that there will be some sort of rule which comes up saying that uh, undrafted players, and I mean, drafted players without playing their first, their first basketball game should not be uh, in one of these pro-am or, uh, you know, a crossover or something like that. Do you think this is going to affect uh, future playing conditions? I mean, honestly, I have like a deeper sense of this. It's just like, mm. it's just too soft, man. Who? Like, Check. seriously. Everybody, like, basketball has been much more intense previously, but you don't hear, like, great players or good players getting sidelined for, like, small fracture here, there. Like, I just, I don't know. I feel like 
they they are catering more to like the ego of the player than like i don't know I don't, i'm not talking about this specific thing maybe this specific oh. thing is actually like real um but generally i feel like the teams are afraid that if they diagnose it wrong like they did with mm. kawai or whatever happens oh yeah, yeah. that that the player might leave or something will happen that way so they like take extra precaution to like make sure but like see for example like you know kobe like he played through like whatever injury he had a dirk played through whatever injury he had tim played through whatever like he literally had no like left leg mm. after yeah. 2009 got it uh so i think that there is also like a generational thought also that Okay now you're not even talking about yoga. them being weak you're talking about the organizations being too scared to not cater to their whims yeah. like not, not have cater a to them and also and also like not say like okay listen you know what just go play mm. you know like that, and I think that's also like a sense of because I feel that there they were like reports that came out Uh, I don't know which who was that like where like the team was like okay you should just go play and then something happens and they then they like I think I think it was a KD thing mm-hmm. they think like KD was not fully recovered from and, Golden State <clears throat> Golden State and they blamed organization saying that Bob Myers for it leave, yeah Bob Myers for it but actually it was KD's mm-hmm. call mm-hmm. right KD said no like I want not this play. repeat yeah. you know and but instantly it was the organization's fault mm. um yeah so i feel like th- there's no because because that. a lo- lot of lot of other like blake griffin missed his first year uh, embiid missed his first year i think ben simmons also missed his first year a lot of these did ben simmons yeah, yeah they all missed their first zion. year right like they didn't zion didn't miss his first year yeah he didn't miss his first year but he was injured i mean missed this entire i'm saying entire first year he missed because of a injury yeah. in the pre season right Uh, I, I, no, but see, that's what I'm saying. I'm not talking specifically about Chet. No, I understand, but uh, it makes sense that maybe there is a little bit of people are scared that you know generational talent could leave because they are more concerned with their own self than being part of a team. Like I, I think that's something that you're saying, right? But uh, yeah, uh, I mean not just team. I mean team. Ch- I, Chet's I just injury like is not even that like surprising, right? Huh. I'm saying Chet Singer is not even that surprising. That man is like really yeah, no, skinny. Yeah, no, no. We we all we all said that uh, the reason why he came came second or third was because mm, second of his potential injury risk. You know, we mm. all knew that. And uh, and happen. he got uh, bumped by LeBron James, which is probably the worst person to get bumped off if you are like one ninety pounds and seven foot one, and still trying to find. I can't even imagine you know, like LeBron bumping into you, man. Oh God! Like, I'll, I'll probably just huge. Die off. And I've I've stu- I've like sort of stood next to him, you know, sort of, uh, like, not really, okay. but sort okay. of, like I, from next from in the distance. same building. And you're like, oh, in the same shit, building. Yeah, it's bi- like you you can like, like for example, like I stood next to like Steph, Russell Westbrook, uh, mm. what's his name, uh, Mike Luka. Conley, Dame, uh, mm. Booker, and I didn't Giannis. really feel that that they were that. Im- Even Yanis was not that imposing. Yanis was tall, mm. but he wasn't like. You know, KD is really tall, man. Like honestly, KD is really tall. <laughs> like he was seven like the two. tallest guy walking around. You know? uh, yeah, yeah. He's definitely seven foot plus. He just they are like somehow like not reporting him seven plus. Yeah, like, six foot eleven. Like, mm-hmm. Super tall. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, and I I felt like LeBron was the most just physically imposing, like. I I I didn't feel that with any other player when I was there like Giannis was was big and tall but he didn't feel like if he's as physically imposing as LeBron like he, I don't think LeBron even really really bumped him or something like he just got caught up in LeBron's gravity and he's like oh shit okay no I, yeah yeah <laughs> but even of course you know much wishes to Chet Ogra we hope LeBron. he comes back stronger because, and then next year we have Poku and Chet and Wembenyama together in the OKC lineup and we Uh, see how many games together they can play. We'll have an up and under for it. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I are you think coming that... back to OKC. Are you coming back? Are you? Are you? I was gonna come back and then this chat goes off. So now I'm, I'm like, okay, I'll, 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 I'll again once more be a Russell oh. Westbrook guy for the season also. 
which means probably out of the league. <laughs> if he goes to in <laughs> Pacers, I heard something that he they're gonna send him to the Jazz or something. If he goes to the Jazz, there is no way. I think they're gonna wave him off, and the hunt will begin again yeah. for a lower salary for him next. Because I'm sure somebody will take him, but at a much lower salary, like a mid-level exception or some shit like that. Amnesty and then mid-level exception. Nobody's gonna take him at that money. How the great ones fall huh? so quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like kind of like AI, uh, you know, like AI was really good, and then once he left he for really bad Nuggets, and, quickly. and then yeah, good. I think Melo also is probably like that kind of feeling. Same. Melo, like, has one scoring title and like almost MVP, but uh, just the game just left ahead, and like you know, different way. I, think I don't it's know just because they, they just didn't mm. couldn't like adjust. Their games, you know, like it, Chris it, Paul is still like a very good yeah. player, mm. and I don't think I don't necessarily think Chris Paul's. I mean, as much as I don't like Carmelo, I don't think Chris Paul's like uh, skill set is that much better than Carmelo's. I think Carmelo's mm. skill set of scoring the ball uh, more unique, is quite more, or at a yeah. very high level. Yeah, Correct. but just he he just cannot be not the. Best score like he, for him like mentally it's very difficult. Yeah. I think for most people it is very difficult. Right? Once you see the highs of what you can be, I think it's very difficult to be like okay, I'll take now, I'll now take a smaller order. A lot, lot of the other players I think find it very difficult to forget what they used to be and try like they have to remember what they are currently, right? Like uh, Draymond Green has always been this person. He's not been something else. He's always been the person who's. Uh, not doing the scoring part of it, but he's doing everything else. Like Steph has always been an amazing shooter, and you have like a complete cheat code on uh, offense. And but there are some players who, once the skill drops off, then that reveals who they are. Like, are they a team player, or are they still caught up in what was the scene five years ago? Anyway, you know, that is that. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for. Staying with us this entire time. Uh, we'll again come back with you next week. Till then, like, share, subscribe, do all that jazz, and we will catch you next week. Uh, Vinny, say bye bye. Bye bye.